Hello, and I'm Tina Olke, your instructor for Psych 155. Today we're going to get to see some of the different kind of psychological therapies in action. During Chapter 1, we learned the fundamentals behind psychodynamic, behavioral, cognitive, and even gestalt therapies. We've also learned how these theories developed ways to look at personality development and even think about conditioning and learning. This week in Chapter 15, we're going to take a look at what it means for the theories when it comes to applying them to a therapy situation. In particular, we'll examine person-centered, gestalt, behavioral, and cognitive behavioral through techniques and a short demonstration of them in action. Now that we've learned about psychological disorders, we need to know how to treat them. Well, there are two main types of therapy. One where people talk to a therapist in order to feel better and reach an understanding or an insight into themselves and their issue. And the other uses medical interventions. Psychotherapy is when a trained therapist uses psychological techniques to help someone overcome difficulties or accomplishing a goal. Insight therapy is what we know really as talk therapy. The main goal is to help people gain insights into their behaviors, thoughts, and feelings. Action therapy's main goal is to change a disordered inappropriate behavior. Most therapists use a combination of both action and insight therapies. Humanistic therapy's goals are to boost people's self-fulfillment by helping them grow in self-awareness and self-acceptance. Do you remember when we talked about Carl Rogers? He kind of gives you that warm, fuzzy kind of feeling. Well, he developed the humanistic technique called person-centered therapy. It's really very non-directive in that the client does all the talking and the therapist just listens without judging or interpreting and really tries not to guide the client toward any certain answer or certain insight. The client should really come up with everything all on their own. Rogers believed that they could do this if they were provided with four elements, and those are reflection, unconditional positive regard, empathy, and authenticity. Reflection is when the therapist restates what the client says, but doesn't interpret it at all. Unconditional positive regard. Do you remember when we studied this before? Rogers believed that it was crucial to therapy session, and if a client was given warmth, respect, and acceptance, then that client would reach an insight. Empathy, the therapist must understand the feelings of the client. And last, authenticity. Authenticity is genuine, open, and honest response of the therapist to the client. And if the therapist does provide all four of those elements, then Rogers believed the client would be able to reach growth and insight. Okay, so now we're going to watch a short video segment of the person Center therapy in action. While we watch this, I'd like for you to look out for all of four of those elements in, um, in action in the clip. Um, okay, Max, I understand that you have some concerns that you'd like to discuss today. Um, so whenever you're ready, I'm happy for you to voice whatever it is that you'd like to talk about. Yeah, well, I suppose the bottom line is I'm having some difficulties in my relationship with my wife and I'm very uncertain about actually being here and it's a bit embarrassing talking about these things with a stranger. Yeah, so you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable discussing such personal information with an outsider? Yes it is, I'm a bit awkward. Right. I was brought up to solve your problems yourself yeah, and, yeah. and you don't go out, outside the family, you don't take your problems to strangers. And I, I would normally do, but also I realise now that given the, the, the depth of the problem that I also need to get another perspective on things. Okay, alright. I guess um, what I generally say to people when they first come along is that it's not uncommon to feel quite uncomfortable talking to an outsider about such personal information. and. Um, even though I can't predict exactly how you're going to feel and how things will go for you today, I do know that in the past a lot of other people have, have actually felt quite uncomfortable to begin with, but as they've been able to talk and, and get things off their chest, they actually feel quite relieved. So you might find that, that as we spend more time together that you're more comfortable in this environment too. Well, I hope it works out that way. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how we go. Yeah. Well, it was a friend of mine who been involved in counselling previously right. and suggested that this is what I, I should attempt to do anyway. Right. See where we go. 
Okay, okay. And you were saying before as well that um, that normally you like to solve things yourself and, and work things out yourself. And um, I think it's quite a balanced perspective to, to be looking at how you're going to resolve things yourself and also to get an outside perspective as well. So um, I can see lots of benefit that can come from, from that dual approach. Well, I, I haven't succeeded in doing it by myself, so... Yeah. It's worth a go. Yeah, so perhaps we can we can shed some light on on some helpful approaches yeah. for you. Were you able to see some of those four elements in action? The reflection, the unconditional positive regard. I know it's across the screen, but maybe you saw it and heard it, the warmth, respect, and accepting atmosphere in action. The empathy, she was able to understand the feelings that he was um, expressing to her, and the authenticity. The founders of Gestalt Therapy are Fritz and Laura Pearls. The approach stresses the here and now of awareness. It focuses on the what and how of behavior and on the role of unfinished business from the past in preventing effective functioning right now in the present. Gestalt experiments take many forms, from setting up a dialogue between a client and a significant person represented by an empty chair, like you would role play that a dialogue between that person uh, using an empty chair. And you might relive painful experiences or exaggerate a gesture or a posture or some nonverbal mannerism that you might express during the therapy uh, session. I've got another video for you that shows Gestalt therapy in action. Please, as you're watching it, look for some of these things that I described for you. All right. Hi, Sandra. Um, well, uh, we have about half an hour together this time. And uh, how are you feeling right now? What's your awareness? There's a bit of a kind of the situation is different from last time. Um. No, I'm still feeling the same. I'm right. Just yeah, yeah the same I think it's, what? Uh, just just a little frustrated at the moment. That's all. Mm -hmm. And what is the frustration like for you? It, it's just a a tight feeling that I have. I I just um, yeah. It, it's very it's. It's difficult to put into words, but just uh, yeah. it just doesn't feel okay. feel good. So let's shift it to your body. Where in your body you feel this tight feeling? I think it's it's in my chest. So that's the heart area. It's the okay. feeling the, around the heart. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And what is there in that heart? When you pay attention to that that area in your heart, mm -hmm. what what do you find there? What sort of things you find there? Just a compressing feeling. Just. Uh, I noticed that you have been saying it when you talked about your feelings, and uh, I would like to suggest if you can say "I" ah, instead of "it" mm -hmm. and see what happens in your body. Mm -hmm. So, were you able to see some of the more uh, different approaches in the Gestalt therapy that they use? Uh, they are more directive. They focus on the here and now. They they emphasize the body and the behaviors. Uh, could you tell the difference between Gestalt and person-centered? Uh, the next type of therapy, behavioral therapy, really doubts the, the effectiveness of being self-aware and instead it seems that the behaviors are the problem and that applying learning principles can fix those behaviors. They don't try to fix or identify anything underlying or, or hidden causes. Instead, they focus on the maladaptive symptom just what is visible that is going wrong. Let's watch a video of Behavioral Therapies in Action. Well, that's the housekeeping finished with Kathleen, so perhaps you'd like to tell me a bit about what brings you here today. Well, actually, uh, Wendy, I, I'm having a lot of trouble coping with, with my job. Mm -hmm. um, the, the hours I'm working are, are supposed to be 8.30 to 3.30 and lately I've just got so much work given to me. I, I'm having difficulty getting through the whole day with it and um, I, I've got a couple of teenage boys that I pick up after school every day because they're so naughty they're not allowed to go on the bus and, and so I've made my hours 8.30 to 3.30 so I give them a chance to 
to get out of school and, and then at 3.30 I'm, I'm supposed to be there to pick them up but lately it's been later and later I'm getting there sometimes 4.30, the other day it was 5 and the boys were just, oh, they're, they're, they're naughty boys, you know this. And, and they're, they're everywhere, they're all over the school, they're getting into trouble and, and then I'm late home preparing dinner for my husband and then he gets annoyed and on it goes. It's okay. all getting too much. It's, uh, I think okay. You're supposed to finish at 3.30. I know the hours you're employed yeah, to. Yeah. Why do you think you're not finishing at 3.30, oh, Kathleen? Well, I've got now. too much work. And who's giving the work. you the work? What's happening? What did you think? Can you see they really didn't go anything below the surface? They didn't say, oh, I noticed you were feeling stress, or I hear the stress in your body. I can see your tensions rising. They weren't going, I've heard you mention naughty uh, several times. Tell me about your boy's behavior. They weren't looking for anything underlying. They went into identifying the problem. And if we would have continued on with the video, you would have seen how they were setting up problem solving behaviors with it. Uh, let's move on to the next and final one, and that is cognitive behavioral therapies. They really focus on the present rather than the past, like behavioral therapy, but also seems that people interact with the world more than just simple reactions to stimuli. People see the world and react based on their thoughts. So the purpose of cognitive behavioral therapy is to create awareness of those thoughts to help people change the negative irrational thinking and replace it with new positive ways of thinking and then to practice new behaviors based on those positive thoughts. Let's see what it looks like in action. Okay, Marsha, so um, how can I help you today? Well, I'm working full-time. I'm a part-time student. Right. I've just gotten engaged and I live at home. There's just so much stress in my life. I have everything happening all at once. Just to top it all off, I failed an exam, a really big exam, and I just feel like I can't do anything anymore, I can't do anything right. I've just got so much stress and I feel like such a disappointment, such a failure and I've embarrassed my family by failing. Like, mm. Yeah, I just don't know what to do anymore and I, I guess I've come here today to tell you like I, I want to leave uni and okay. I guess that's why I've come right. here to you today. Okay, so it sounds like a whole lot of stuff's on top of you at the moment? Yeah, just yeah. so much, just Stressing all piling on, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're working full time, plus part time study, um, part -time yeah. study and then you've got your a wedding preparation. Yeah, just wow. got engaged and wedding's just a month away now, a so month. yeah, so yeah. I've just got so much happening. Work is really demanding, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah, just mm -hmm. fail this exam, it's just, yeah, all don't know what much. to do, all too much. Yeah. Yeah. So I imagine you've been um, sweating on this for a while and it's all been swirling around in it's your head? It's just been building up and okay. building up and so much pressure with everything and I'm living at home so my parents, you know, a lot of pressure, need to do everything right and mm -hmm. yeah, and mm. by failing this I feel like I've just embarrassed them and disappointed them mm. and mm. I just don't feel like I'm good enough, mm. you know, to go on studying. Okay, and um, have they said much to you about failing your exam? Did you see him really focus in on her thoughts? If we would have continued to watch the video, you would have seen him um, outline ways to change her, her distorted, irrational thinking. There are a lot more therapies that we didn't cover, such as psychoanalysis, motivational interviewing, group therapy, family therapy, fitness therapy, drug therapy, and many more. So what therapy technique is best and which one works the best? It has been found that over half of all psychotherapists use an eclectic approach, which is a blend of all psychotherapies, taking different elements from the therapy techniques we learn from today and more. I hope you have enjoyed learning about some of the different types of therapy styles. For today, this does conclude what we'll be covering in our PowerPoint mini lesson. The reflective log assignment asks you to suggest ideas for future research designed to advance knowledge on the concepts in the chapter, or to apply the material learned in the chapter to a current news issue, or to experiences in your own life. Today we've touched on just some of the therapy styles. What were your thoughts on them? Did you like some of them more than others? What about some of the ones in the book that I didn't cover? Also the book touches on therapeutic alliance. and its value to the success of therapy. What are your thoughts on that? Did you have any questions? What have you seen in the news recently that you'd like to comment on? 
There are a lot of ideas out there from chapter 15 that you might want to discuss. I hope that you enjoy doing it, and I can't wait to read your logs.